Hey guys, welcome to another show of East to West. Once again, I'm just excited to be here with you guys to share the next few minutes of just trying to encourage each other, encourage through hope and love and grace and adventure and journey and just whatever. Whatever comes to mind that, that God, I really just feel like God wants to share with us. And So last week we started talking about the, the prodigal son and I kind of just gave an overview of it and kind of some of the things we're going to talk about. So for those of you who didn't join us last week and may not know who the prodigal son is or the story of the son, it's basically a son who who is tired of the status quo. He's tired of life as usual. He thinks, man, this life is boring. Is this as good as it's going to get for me? Is this as really as good as it's going to get? So he comes up with this plan. He comes up with this idea. He's, he said, hmm, maybe if I just got my inheritance early, then I would take that and go live in a far off land and I could just be happy for the rest of my life. So he, he hatched this plan and he went to his father and he said, Father, I want you to give me everything that, that's coming to me. I want my inheritance. And so the father divvied up the land, gave him his money. He went to a far off land, started out happy, I'm sure. Started out with a lot of friends. You know, he was probably the, the, the talk of the town. Hey, who's this new guy? You know, he... He's, he sure is, you know, got a lot of money. He's taking care of things. And then eventually the money ran out. And then the famine came. And he couldn't find work. Isn't that amazing that when, when, when we get to our very bottom, that God puts situations in our lives that, that, that only direct us back to Him, to the Father? Isn't that amazing? I've experienced that in my own life when... I've hit rock bottom and I have had nowhere else to go and I didn't think I had anywhere else to go. God has always put that beacon on and has pointed me back to where I really should have been in the first place and that's with the Father. And so he, he comes up with another plan. He says, if I just go back, if I just ask him to make me a servant, because they eat way better than I'm eating now, I'd rather be a servant eating his food then starve and eat in pig's food. So he gets up, begins this journey. Who knows how long the journey is. And he gets to the top of the hill that overlooks his, his, his farm. And instead of seeing a father shaking his fist at him, instead of seeing a father going inside and, and locking the door, or going about, about his business, he sees a father that starts to run towards him and embraces him and gives him the best robe and gives him the ring and makes a just a feast and the servants and the family and the father and the son they just celebrate together so today I want to talk about you know this notion that you know is this really as good as life is going to get for us you know is, is this really as good as it's going to get for us I know Many times in my life, I was like, man, I, I, can life get any worse? Or can life get any better? You know, and sometimes when I've thought that and I've tried to find out <laughs> and I've tried to do it on my own, I've realized very quickly that life isn't always better on the other side. You know, we've always heard the old expression, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And I think this young man realized that lesson in a physical, tangible way. You know, because he, 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 here he is, he's obviously the son of a rich farmer. You know, he's got all this land, I'm sure. He's got all this animal, I'm sure. By those day standards, I'm sure his house was magnificent. He probably didn't want for anything. And isn't that amazing? That he didn't want for anything. He probably had everything that he needed there, but he felt like he he needed more. You know, he felt like he needed more and he, and, and he wasn't going to find what he was looking for there at home. 
he needed to travel. I don't know if he'd heard of this far off city or this far off land where they were, you know, just having fun, taking care of things, enjoying life or what, or the, you know, these crazy, exciting things that were going on. And he wanted to be a part of that action. He wanted to be part of that. He didn't think the life that he had now was, you know, worthy, I guess. And he wanted to go and find a life for, for himself. And you know, that's hard, and I get that. It's hard for us, you know, parents, when we, when we, when we let our children go, you know, I have a son in college, you know, he's been, this is his junior year. You know, and I remember when I had to let him go, and he had to go out and 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 and, and sprout his own wings and, and become his own man and become his own person. But I think this I think this story is a little different. I think this kid here just thought there's got to be something better. This is this isn't all what was planned for me. I just know that uh, I just know that. You know, life just sometimes just likes to to put that carrot out in front of us, likes to dangle it. And I think the carrot was dangling for this young man. So the father divvies up his land, you know, gives him his inheritance, and the son says, See ya! I'm out of here. Packs, I'm sure, whatever belongings he has, and just splits. Begins this journey, and I'm sure he's probably thinking, oh man, I can't wait to get there. I'm going to have so much fun. My life is going to be complete now. Um, I'm going to make new friends. I'm going to find probably a, a wife. You know, I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to create everything in that foreign land that I had in this, the land of, of comfortability that I'm leaving. And isn't that interesting that we we always think that when we go off to this foreign land and we and we and we go and we leave the the comfortableness of our of our, of the space that we've lived in and grown up in, and then we venture out into this foreign land that we think we can just make that foreign land of the unknowable just as just as grand as the land of comfort. And and this young man quickly will find out. That that's not always the case. And so I'm sure he's just walking, thinking, planning, you know, probably didn't plan on it ending up the way it did. I mean, we never, ever, ever, ever plan for failure. I don't know anybody in my life, I don't know anybody that I know, or I'm sure you don't know anybody, or yourself have never planned for failure. I've never said, you know, I'm going to wake up today and just hope I fail at everything. That's just silly. I mean, that's not how we're created. We're created to be victorious. And we're created to, to find joy and to find hope. And, you know, it's just... Failure is not, not really in our design. I mean, it's, it's just... Failure, I feel like, just goes against everything that we were created created to be. So this young man, he gets to this town, you know, and he's cat, he's now set everything aside. He gets to this town, he's a stranger, he's gotta, I'm sure, obviously find some place to stay, food, you know, shelter, and I don't know how hard it was back then to, to do all that. I mean, today you can go on Google, or you can go on sites and book hotel rooms and have food delivered to your house and order food on the phone. And, but back in those days, they didn't have all of that. So I just don't know how hard it was for him to, to be able to do that. And I wonder when the hardship of his decision leaving home really began. Was it when he ran out of money? Was it when he arrived at the, at the town? Was it when he began the journey? Or was it when he asked the question? I mean, sometimes we think, man, how did I get here? And we think, how did we get here? Just all of a sudden, just amazingly, one day just happened and we're like, whoa, 
how did we get here? How did this happen? But it's a slow simmer, I'm telling you, it's a slow simmer. If we could look back in our lives and see, see the times that we've said to God, give me everything I, that, that, I, that I deserve. Just give it to me now. I'll take it now. And I know how to take care of myself. No matter what situation I'm in, I'll be able to handle myself. I'll be able to take it. You know, I could just have one more drink. It's okay. I can have that one more beer. It's okay. I can handle myself. I can control it. I can, I can, I can manipulate the end. I can create the ending of this story. And then you wake up one day going, oh my gosh, how in the world did I get here? You know, it's like the Talking Heads song, Once in a Lifetime. I'm a huge Talking Heads fan. I'm a huge David Byrne fan. And I just, that song is just amazing because it's just like, it's the song about living life and then all of a sudden you're just like, how did I get here? You know, how did this happen? You know, and, 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 and I'm sure as we go on through the weeks, we're going to discover that moment for this young guy. That moment where he's like, Oh my gosh, how did this happen? How am I in a pigsty yearning to eat the food that the pigs eat? How did I do that? How did I go from this, this farm that it's not described, but if, 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 if his inheritance was enough to, to let him journey to another town and to live there for however long, I'm sure it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a massive, massive farm, you know, and, and, and to go from that to leaving into uncertainty, I mean, I'm sure in his own mind, he, he had a picture of how it was going to play out. And isn't that funny how, how we try to make plans and then life gets in the way. And then it's like, how on earth? did this happen? How on earth did I get here? You know, and, and we're going to learn that through this story that life always doesn't play fairly. And in fact, life most times is out to destroy, you know, and, 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 and once we get out of that will of God and we leave the farm you know, we go into these unsettled, unchartered, unknown places. You know, life has a way of just smashing us down, beating us down. You know, and, and, we, and it's funny, we just take the hits. We keep taking the hits until one day when the hit is hard enough to say, Oh my goodness, what am I doing with my life? Why am I here? Why did I think this was going to be better than what I had? You know, why? And you start asking yourself, and he, I'm sure he started asking himself, himself, why did I leave? Why did I think this was going to be better? Why did I think I was wiser than my father? You know, why? I just, I can just see him, picture him in this pig pen, which back then was probably nasty, because here we are, it's in the Middle East, and it's hot. I mean, it is hot there. I mean, it, it, it's like 90 degrees at 4 o'clock in the morning. So it's hot. So being in a pig pen in that environment with the heat, I'm sure was repulsive. Just the smell was just overwhelming. And here he is sitting there in this muck and this mire wondering, oh my gosh, how did I get here? And he knows, we all know, we all know. When we get in situations and we hit rock bottom, when we ask that question, how did I get here? It's not a question that's because we don't know. It's a question because we think, I had all these plans. I had it all figured out. I had it all worked out. And all of a sudden, boom, here I am now. You know, and most people, what, what, what's great about this story is most times, myself included, when we've hit rock bottom, we've, we, we tend to blame. 
we tend to start the blame game, you know, and this guy didn't. This guy immediately realized where his salvation lied. He knew where his redemption lied. He knew where grace was. He knew where love was. Because he knew, even if my father doesn't claim me as a son anymore, he will find compassion and grace and love enough to at least hire me as a hired hand. So here's this guy leaving the farm happy, full of hope, full of great plans and dreams. And now he's walking back to the farm, broken, bitter, sad, um, scared, uncertain, you know. And that's why I think those things, obviously, a lot of times when we hit rock bottom, cause us to blame, you know, keeps, keeps us from going back to where, where redemption and forgiveness can begin. And so a lot of times we will stay in that pig pen. We'll wallow around in the pig pen. We'll holler at everybody else because we're in the pig pen. <laughs> but, you know, as he took each step he took home, I'm sure his heart raced. You know, he was just a nervous wreck, sweating. You know, it reminds me of when I was in elementary school and I would have to go see the principal. Yes, it's hard to believe that to think that I would have to go see the principal. But I was a I was a rambunctious young young boy and I remember, you know, when the teacher would have to take me to the principal's office. You know, I was tough on the outside, but inside I was scared. My heart started racing more. I started wondering what is gonna happen, what's gonna happen? You know, what's gonna be the end result of this? You know, not knowing and the unknown is is tough. I know a lot of people out there like me that struggle with the unknown. I I would rather know everything up front, know everything that's going on, and not just not just wing it. I'm not a winger. I uh I like to I like to be prepared, I like to plan, I like to schedule, I like to check and recheck and double check and triple check and quadruple check. So here's this guy, here's this kid going back home to where he, he's sure that this father's going to not hire him. I'm sure he thinks my father's going to throw me out. And I'm wondering if he was even beginning to think of the scenario after his father tells him to leave. Because at this point, if his father tells him to leave, he's toast. I mean, he's got nowhere else to go. So here's this guy taking a chance on coming back to the one that he had hurt, the one that he had cast out, the one that he said he didn't need, the one that said he, the one that wasn't good enough to, to provide him a good life. And here he is going back to him and, and thinking, man, if he doesn't take me back, that's it. I'm toast. I don't know what I'm going to do. So when he gets to the top of the hill, of course, he looks down and he sees, I'm sure he sees this house with the smoke coming out of the chimney. He sees the barn off in the distance with all the animals. And he sees the, the servants working the, the, the fields. And his father's out planting flowers. And as he's standing there, like I said, he gets this sight that he never, ever expected in a million years. He got, he got the sight of love and grace and forgiveness running towards him. That wasn't a father running towards his son. And when we, and when we, and when we as parents, you know, struggle with our children, struggle with things that they've done, you know, don't let, don't let them see an angry parent. Don't let them see an angry parent. Because I'm sure this father was angry. I'm sure this father was hurt. I'm sure this father was fed up. But that's not what this kid saw. This kid saw love, 
grace and forgiveness running full speed, not, 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 not taking a stroll, not walking quickly, running full speed on Carl Lewis speed, you know, up this hill. And I'm sure, that, I'm sure the father was no spring chicken. I'm sure he was, he was an old, old father at this point. But that wasn't stopping him from getting to his son. He ran up this hill. And I could just imagine the brokenness and the sorrow melting away from this kid each step the father ran towards him. The years of worry, the years of hurt, the years of hate, the years of uncertainty just melting all the all the things that this kid had done while he was gone was just melting away because instead of seeing an angry upset father he was looking at love he was looking at grace he was looking at forgiveness he was looking at the the uh, the exact opposite of what he expected and isn't that great about god god does that in such a great Way. He always gives us what we don't expect. You know, whenever we mess up, we expect judgment. We expect punishment. We expect uh, shame. We expect unforgiveness. But when we stand at that hill and we look at that heavenly throne... And we see God, our Father, get off of that throne and come running. Running towards us with a robe and a ring. Oh my gosh. I just wish we could grasp that. I, wish, I just wish that no matter how far we've gone or how far our children have gone, that they can still stand on the hill and see God running towards them. And, and knowing that we love them and that God loves them no matter what. No matter. No matter. Because how many times have we had to stand on top of our own hill and see the Father running towards us? The hill for me that one day was a door in an alleyway. That was my hill. And I looked up and I saw... I just saw the most beautiful, it was just like I had never seen the sun before, that bright before in my life. And I'm not just saying it to say it, this is actually really what happened to me. And I heard a voice, I did, I heard a voice that says, enough is enough. And I said to myself, I said, I just, I can't do this anymore. That was 13 and a half years later, ago, 13 and a half years ago. And I experienced grace, forgiveness, love. And I know you guys can feel that. I know you guys feel, some of, I know some of you feel like you're the father in this story. You know, like, my, my, my child has left. I don't know my child. I don't understand my child. I don't know. And I don't know, instead of, I love you has been replaced with I don't knows, and I don't know, and I don't know, and I don't know. Just like this father in the story, I'm sure spent every day going, I don't know where my son is. I don't know what my son is doing. But I do know that I love my son, and I will forgive my son, and I will reconcile with my son on that day when he comes home. And so I want, that's what I want to leave you with this week, it's just find reconciliation because so many children are standing on the hill looking down at their homes and all they see are the lights out and all they see are locked doors and angry faces it's time to turn the lights on unlock the doors and let them see grace and let them see love and let them see forgiveness and let them know that no matter how far they go, they can always come home. So have a great week, guys. We will 
see you next time. I love you here. God loves you. Just always remember, wake up always remembering that Jesus loves you. And, and, and no matter how far you've gone, you can always come back. We love you. Have a good night. Have a good week, everybody.